For every lock, there's one key. And for every flower, there's one special beak. Yes, beaks and teeth are our subject today. Crocs come big with big teeth. But if you want to study them, it's best to start small. There are some tough nuts out there. And even tougher nutcrackers. We take a look at the open-billed stalks of Africa and of Asia. And finally, the teeth that top the charts, the big five bites. But whose are the biggest? Let's start with some birds who know a secret or two. Flowers are not here just to beautify our world. They serve a vital purpose. These blooms are not window dressing. They're colorful landing pads for pollinators. Over millions of years, exclusive relationships are built up between flowers and their pollinators. Many come in a standard shape, but some pollen carriers have turned it into an art form. Enter the hummingbirds. So specialist are these tiny birds that more than 150 North American plants depend on them, and them alone, for pollination. The relationship between the two is rather like that between a fortress with only one gate and only one lock, and the gatekeeper. Unless you have the right key, you can't get in. The keys are the beaks of the hummingbirds, and they've taken this symbiotic relationship and run with it. The little hermit hummingbird, with its slightly curved beak, a beak that fits perfectly into this heliconia flower. The sickle bill. It looks as though it's flown into a window. But no, this beak unlocks another species of heliconia. For the violet sabre wing, life revolves around the Columbia flower. It too possesses a beak that fits the bill, or rather, a bill that fits the flower. As it feeds, a perfectly positioned stamen douses its head with pollen. The hummer gets nectar, the plant gets pollinated, and everyone goes home happy. But wait, what's this? a mountain green gem, an evil hummingbird. When the saber wing has buzzed off to another patch, the gem moves in. The mountain green gem's beak is clearly the wrong shape for the Columbia flower, a fact the hummingbird is aware of. But it doesn't play by the rules. Firstly, it doesn't hover. Oh no, this bird lands. Then, rather than spend millions of years co-evolving the ultimate beak, this guy just punches in by the side, draining the flower's precious nectar and entirely escaping the pollination game. But most hummingbirds play by the rules. In fact, some have taken things almost too far. These trumpet-shaped flowers are nearly eight centimeters long. A narrow opening prevents interlopers. Well-protected sepals keep thieves out. So good are its defenses that it's stretched hummingbird ingenuity to its limits. The nectar's way out of reach. Enter now the sword bill. This is the ultimate in beak technology. A beak that's nearly twice as long as the bird itself. Once inside the flower, 
The swordbill's super long tongue absorbs the nectar much like a paper towel absorbs water. Adaptability has scattered over 300 species of hummingbird throughout North and South America. Such fragile birds that live on a knife edge, their many shaped beaks are the answer to oh so many flower shaped questions. Hummingbirds are found only in the Americas, but they have their mimics in Africa. The sunbirds. Sunbirds look similar, but they tend not to hover.